As soon as we had maps showing the coast of the Atlantic in the west of Eurasia and the coast of the Atlantic in the east of the Americas, people started to notice that, hey, this kind of looks like just a really wide seaway. The Americas just kind of fit into Europe and Africa. And this inspired a number of people over the centuries to propose that the continents had moved apart over time, which is what happened. But the dominant view of the 19th and early 20th centuries was that the continents we have today were largely stable, and that more or less extensive lands had risen up to connect them, only to sink again to become the South Atlantic after the Cretaceous. These have several configurations and designations. The earliest is possibly Brazilian-Ethiopian continent. I never said all the names would be catchy. Others were just the western portion of Gondwana land, often called South Atlantis. Still others were precursors to it, like Flabellatus land, which was supposed to exist in the Devonian, a name that Dutoy called as inappropriate an expression as the name Brontosaurus C would be. And now I really want somebody to name something the Brontosaurus C. Von Jering had connections persist up through the Paleogene, Arc Hellenis in the south to correspond with Arc Atlantis in the north. Another worker, Willis, was unconvinced that any landmass existed worth calling a continent. He reconstructed what he called granitic apophyses, like the Brazil Guinea Isthmus, running under what is today the Fernando de Noronha and Sao Paulo Islands, with another jutting off of Angola and then up the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. To Willis, the South Atlantic in the Permian formed an enclosed Caribbean. So before plate tectonics, Gondwana land was not the only game in town for your southern paleocontinent needs.